there will be two separate videos devoted to the F minor prelude from Bach's second book of the Well-Tempered Clavier because there are two separate issues I would like to explore. In this video, I will perform the F minor prelude in three different temperaments. The second video will be about interpretive and analytical issues and will include a complete performance of the piece in my preferred temperament. That's where I will also reveal more about the jazzy reference, although if you followed my channel long enough, you might already know what I'm referring to, but that's enough of a hint for now. The previous Bach prelude I presented in three different temperaments was in the key of C major. As this is such a basic key, it can work in the vast majority of temperaments, although, as I argued, Bach's harmonic thinking is such that even in this most basic of keys, quarter comma mean tone struggles to cope. And it is important to keep in mind that while we do not know the exact temperament Bach had in mind, the title of the collection, as well as the fact that we have preludes and fugues in all major and minor tonalities, means that what he had in mind was some form of unequal circulating temperament or well temperament. Here, we're dealing with a slightly less usual tonality, since F minor has four flats. This means that our options outside such unequal circulating temperaments are going to be more limited. Accordingly, this comparison can no longer include quarter comma mean tone, as two of the flats that are part of F minor, namely A flat and D flat, do not exist in mean tone. Now, I have said before that 17th century composers will sometimes explore these non-existent notes for expressive purposes. Bach, however, does not think in that way at all. And just as a short demonstration, here is the first section of the F minor prelude, played in quarter comma mean tone, and you will probably thank me for not playing the second section as well. Please excuse the difference in attire. I don't always film the entirety of my videos on the same day. And now, on to the real comparison. The first temperament is my favorite temperament overall, which is the Rameau temperament. As I said in my previous comparison video, this is definitely not what Bach had in mind, nor am I making any claims for its suitability beyond the fact that I simply like to use it for the colors it gives to the music, and in this particular tonality, it adds an extra element of dramatic effect, which I think suits the character of this prelude. Next, we have the unequal circulating temperament I used in the previous comparison video, which is Kirnberger III. This temperament tends to be a bit of an oddball among circulating temperaments, because it contains one pure major third. 
Finally, we have a more normal unequal circulating temperament, Werkmeister 3. And I say more normal because like the vast majority of circulating temperaments, it is based on the idea of combining pure and impure perfect fifths at the expense of major thirds, none of which are pure. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to play each section of the prelude without repeats, and the order of presentation will be Rameau, Kirnberger III, Werkmeister III. And like my previous comparison video, each of the performances will be presented along with a score rather than a video of me playing. This is because I hope that looking at the score will be more helpful in perceiving the differences between each temperament. In the previous comparison video, there were some comments that it was very difficult to perceive differences. So if this is new territory for you, let me tell you how I approached it when this was also new territory for me. First of all, I promise it gets easier with practice. It's just something that many musicians simply don't think about because many of us, myself included, grew up with only one kind of temperament, equal temperament, which doesn't really have any colors since all intervals are equally tempered. The Rameau temperament will probably be easier to distinguish from the other two as some of the harmonies are simply going to be a little more spicy. But the differences between Kirnberger and Werkmeister are going to be much more subtle. So what helped me at first, and this is why I especially wanted you to look at the score and not be distracted by me playing, is to pay special attention to those places where there is a modulation or at least a temporary harmonic movement away from the original tonic. You can tell when this happens because when we start moving away from our main tonality, you start seeing accidentals in the score. And as one defining characteristic of any unequal temperament is that each key has its own distinctive color. Moving between keys means that chords will have slightly different qualities. And each temperament will handle this move in a different way. So that's where you can perceive the differences between them. And I still have to warn you, it will probably require more than one listening. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy this comparison.